Good morning and welcome to day nine of our Making It Together live educational sessions. I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls and I'm excited to be with you yet again. Uh, day nine for some of you. I appreciate everybody that's been joining us uh, since the beginning or even in the last few days, uh, even this week. I know this is starting to catch on. Viewership is going up. Uh, which means you guys must be finding value uh, in the content we're delivering. So our goal behind these Making It Together sessions is to give you inspiration, education, help you lay the foundation for your business so that you can get all the sales that you can right now to stay uh, in survival mode. And more important than that, I think, is so you can plan the future of your business. Some of you uh, may not even be in the apparel decoration industry today. You may not own your own equipment. We've been hearing that where there's a lot of uh, startups watching that want to start their own heat printing business from home or storefront, whatever it may be. Uh, this is for you too. So we've went through a lot of different sessions so far. And uh, today we're going to do start to finish on two uh, projects with heat transfer vinyl. And I think uh, you'll like them sort of like yesterday uh, because I haven't practiced them at all. I've thought through them. I grabbed the rolls of vinyl and put them near my vinyl cutter, the shirts near my heat press. And so I think I know um, how this will work, but I'm pushing uh, the limits a little bit uh, for myself with the type of applications that I'm doing and being okay if I mess something up on air because I think that's the important thing is that uh, we try new things, we push ourselves during this time uh, because that's going to make us uh, better as apparel decorators when we come out of this thing. We'll be just a little bit more knowledgeable uh, than we were before. So I want to welcome Michelle from Iowa, Craig from Washington. Good to see you again. Uh, KF from South Carolina. Um, it looks like uh, Mike's on again. Good morning, Mike. And let's see, we have uh, Jean. Uh, just like real life. Yeah, so it's just like real life here. Uh, no editing, everything's live and good to see Donnie from uh, Mississippi. So we have uh, a lot of our normal viewers and uh, attendance levels are going up. And if you saw yesterday's live session, you know, we made a project. Uh, one of the projects we made was out of a product called High Viz Reflective. And we were able to customize performance wear. And one thing I promised you is that we would show you the look. So I posted that on Facebook yesterday, but for those that aren't a member of our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group, let me give you a little look at this before and after results. So the left is the product, which is our high vis reflective in black that we heat applied onto this OGO performance wear garment. And on the right, you will see the same garment with a photo that was taken in the complete dark with the flash on my camera. So this can simulate, uh, of course, uh, headlights coming at the reflective material. And this is just a really cool uh, effect for visibility. So uh, with the high vis, you have the color and there are a bunch of different colors. And then you have the uh, reflecting result, which is a silver. So this product is not ANSI certified, um, but it is a great fashion reflective. So as I was uh, scrolling through the photos on my phone last night and seeing different trade shows and photos and events that I miss, uh, and I'm starting to miss uh, interaction a little more and more, I did stumble across uh, a project that I completed uh, in my side hustle business a while back. And so I want to bring those photos up uh, because it was, was with this product as well. So this is a photo of a backpack that I customized. This is when my heat press that's behind me uh, right now in this shot was in my garage, same heat press, bought it in 2016. Um, I did this job a little earlier in the year for backpacks for school and dance school. And this was actually the second run of these backpacks. So originally I printed them um, and I'd say, you know, we sold probably about 60, 70 backpacks uh, to dancers. And then, of course, everybody's carrying around the backpack. And so when you open up the sale again and sell the same product, I've already done the work on the artwork, how to press it, had the material in stock. Um, I got another 40 orders uh, on the resale. So 100 backpacks altogether, which is uh, a big profit opportunity. So I'll walk you through a few of these images. So you're seeing the uh, design that's cut that's been applied to the backpack. I actually have the... Um, the flap of the pack folded out and I have it loaded onto the six by 10 inch uh, platen. You could certainly use a pillow or a print perfect pad here. If I go to the next photo, not only did it have uh, this logo, it had some customization. And so you'll see the front logo got printed. And then um, I used the same six by 10 platen, but I needed to use a 
pillow in this case because I wanted to hit this really tight location for uh, the kid's name uh, personalization so they know uh, whose backpack is theirs. And so the benefit of the pillow, as we talked about yesterday, is it helps things like zippers and seams sink down in so you can get an even pressure still on your application area. So uh, a little more challenging, had to hang it over the edge and actually had a lunch tray underneath here to kind of support my backpack so I didn't need to go one knee up to hold it like Karate Kid, but um, kind of rigged that to support it underneath so it would hold in place uh, and then became very easy to apply. This is a 100% uh, denier polyester backpack. It's an Ogeo pack from Sanmar. Um, this is the one I carry personally as well, and we've have for our sales staff. So I know it's a good quality backpack um, with a lot of space inside. Now, I wanna show you uh, some other images of this. So here's an example of all those backpacks um, after they were printed, uh, laid out across the island in my kitchen. Um, so this was the second run of about 35, 40 uh, packs. You can see all of those customized. And of course, I took a photo with the flash on uh, to show you how that looks. So yes, the answer is uh, rosemary, all colors do reflect in silver. You'll see where the flash is hitting this one directly. Uh, it's the same color as this pink. It's just reflecting silver, uh, reflecting the light back to the source. So I wanted to share those photos with you. I thought that might inspire you uh, with an application for this stuff. I love it um, in uh, fashion markets, anywhere there's going to be low light conditions where kids are waiting for a bus stop or coming in and out of an athletic event, a dance school at night. Uh, plenty of opportunity and think beyond just putting a logo on it. Think about uh, being a logo consultant, the safety aspect um, of those packs. So I will look up the SKU number uh, for the backpack and share that um, with you all. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I'll make sure I share that pack with you. I believe it's called the Logan on Sanmar's website, but I will verify um, that for you. So Stanley, good to see you from Arizona. Maria from Dallas. Pam, welcome back again from Kansas. Um, and Michelle, yeah, this is just a reflective vinyl. Uh, it's not a screen print. It's a roll of vinyl that you cut on the vinyl cutter, weed away the excess, and heat apply it. It's called High Viz Reflective. And actually, the um, logo on my shirt here isn't the colors of reflective with the High Viz. It's actually an economy grade reflective that's just a heat transfer vinyl as well. It's called our Reflective 2, and it's really uh, growing. Um, it's just available in the silver color. So wanted to lead us off with some of that. Encourage you to uh, try some new stuff uh, during this time. And uh, the next thing I want to talk through are some of our projects that we're going to do uh, today. And we are going to do these from start to finish, but I want to uh, lay out the projects a little bit for you so you know what to look forward to. Um, and then also uh, share uh, another time where we tried something new and walk you through a process that we came up with called rip away applique and kind of guide you through that. But for right now, let me show you what we're going to work on today. Um, so we are going to do this uh, polyester sweater uh, vest like material. This is from SNS Activewear. Um, I think it's going to be a challenging uh, fabric uh, to be able to decorate. And I'm also going to challenge myself by heat applying our metallic product on it, which is a foil-like uh, look. So here's another project I did for that dance school a while back for competition tees, where I used that um, metallic product. We call it CAD Cut Metallic. You can see it shining off of the lights I have positioned on me here. So it looks great on stage. Um, it looks great just in casual wear, but it's super soft. I have it uh, customized here on this uh, Sophie garment, which is a 60-40 garment that's super soft. It matches the feel. You're not getting any crunchiness. If I squeeze it from the metallic, you're not hearing any of that crunchy sound. It's super soft and pliable. So typically when you're using foil products, as we mentioned in a previous session, you want to make sure you have a high quality garment with um, minimal um, ability to um, have pinholes when you're screen printing foil or you're doing our two-step adhesive plus foil. Uh, this, of course, is a very open weave when you talk about a sweater material. So I wanted to try it and say, because we have just the roll of CAD cut heat transfer vinyl that is in the metallic color and we're gonna use the metallic pink. So it comes with the roll of material with the adhesive on it. I wanna see if we can apply this sweater material and how the sweater reacts uh, to having this on, see if we get some good flexibility. So I'm going to try that one out uh, with a with a just uh, a school uh, based design. And then the other thing that I'm going to try today 
is this district hoodie, um, another garment from uh, Sanmar. It has a cool little V-neck uh, cut to it. And so I'm going to use our CAD cut silicone product, which is a um, 200 micron thick, so a little thicker than a normal viner, vinyl, rubbery feel. So if you've picked up an Under Armour or a Nike garment and you feel that rubbery feel on the insignia, silicone is like that. That's the best way I can explain it. That's a silicone screen print traditionally. This is a roll of silicone vinyl to get that effect. And I'm going to try an oversized design and see if I can uh, kind of trim it up to have it like blend into the seam structure of the garment. Um, use my heat printing pillow as a tool again uh, to be able to apply that. So um, those are going to be our two projects that we're going to get to here in just a moment. See if we can't have success or mess something up. Either way, we'll learn. And um, in the meantime, I have this shirt that our sample uh, team put together that I want to show you that just walks through all the different types of special effect heat transfer vinyl. So we used um, up in this top corner the Flock 2 the other day in our class. So this is a felt-like uh, fuzzy material blends really nice with the garment. I love it for fleece. We pressed a stuffed animal with it the other day. Um, that was two days ago. So watch our Making It Together episode seven uh, on YouTube or Facebook uh, if you want to see how that works. So this product is growing as well. You guys are probably all familiar with Glitter Flake. Uh, this one's been popular for a while. So that's another one. Here's the metallic product that we are going to experiment with today that I was just mentioning to you. Um, here is the reflective, the high-vis color reflect that comes in the different colors. This is the navy uh, color. We also have the scotch light reflective. So 3M is really busy right now, of course, helping with uh, the safety needs of, of the country um, that we have going on right now. But this is a 3M-based reflective product. So we're still seeing growth in this because this is a ANSI certified product, which means it's the product you want to use when you're decorating for something that requires visibility for a roadside work crew, uh, for emergency personnel, whatever it would be. So when you see the vests with the reflective stripes, typically it's a 3M grade reflective that's certified. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the economy reflective. So it costs a lot less, um, not certified, but great for just a fashion product. Then here is the silicone product that has that rubbery texture to it. This is a cool product that's new. It's called Chroma Bling. So it changes based on, you know, the angle of light you see it at and the garment color you're applying it to. So if you want to try something new and experiment, uh, this Chroma Bling is a really cool product. Not quite as soft as the metallic, has a little bit more of a feel to it, but a really cool effect. There's actually a, a fine glitter particle inside of this that you can see. Um, and then pattern product. And we're going to talk a little bit more of pat about patterns in a second, but you're actually seeing uh, this is a vinyl with a pattern inside, and we have all sorts of different patterns that you can create and customize. Just a few more here of our favorite special effects. Um, we have a hologram product. So again, a metallic-like finish. Has a little bit more of a feel to it, but has that sort of nice iridescent uh, sparkles uh, throughout. And then the glow-in-the-dark material. Again, it doesn't look like much here. It just starts as white, but after it charges, you put it in a dark room, it glows uh, lime green. One more, I didn't see it on there, chalkboard. So this is a cool product, especially for teacher uh, gifts and other items for uh, the classroom or instant messaging where you can apply this chalkboard and you can actually write on it with chalk and then erase it or it washes off. So it's a cool thing for uh, kids wear as well. So those are some of the special effect vinyls that you may want to try out and experiment with in your business. They're all available from stalls.com. And again, we have the free shipping offer on orders over $199 that you can get. Uh, it's, it's inside of our apparel decorating business survival guide that we published uh, two days ago. Um, and so we'll link to that in case uh, you want to check it out. So um, yeah, and Mike mentions a good comment. Anytime you're applying any vinyl to something that has uh, a water repellent to it, um, in order to get durable wash results, you need to remove that water repellent, which sometimes can compromise the performance of the product itself. So you gotta be careful with that. Uh, but typically a denatured alcohol, if you rub the area, helps to remove that water repellent. You see it a lot on nylon jackets to at least clean up the logo area to be able to apply uh, the logo. If it's something like a backpack or an umbrella, odds are you're just gonna be able to uh, press it, get it to stay, 
not going to be something that's laundered and you should be fine. So uh, keep that in mind. So um, good to see everybody on today. We have good numbers today. So um, the, the next thing I want to talk about before we get into our projects as we try new things, I'm going to share my screen one more time. And let me navigate to um, this process. Um, and this is a process called rip away applique. So this is something that we came up with um, about, gosh, it's probably been five or six years ago, but I find when we're at trade shows, a lot of people still don't know about it. So if you have embroidery capability in your business, this will give you another way to be able to use your heat transfer vinyl inventory. And so the typical applique process for an embroiderer is that you would uh, sew the placement stitch like you see in the uh, primary image on the left side of the screen here. Um, then you would have to cut your twill pieces um, or buy your twill pieces pre-cut from stalls. It's a service we offer. Position it on the placement stitch and then finish that with your zigzag stitch or satin stitch or whatever stitch type you want to sew. But the challenging part of that is you have to cut the pieces um, and get those cut and then position them into place. So if you have a last name with a lot of characters like mine, Ellsworth, or even a school name, um, that's going to be a lot of placement. So we came up with this idea a while back um, that's called rip away applique that allows you to just lay a panel of vinyl sew through it to create an applique result. So let me walk you through the steps um, in that process. So number one is you want to still sew your placement stitch. That placement stitch is going to give you the location where you're going to lay the panel of uh, product down onto whatever, and I'll show you the compatible products here in a second. Next, um, after you sew that placement stitch, you're going to lay a panel of your product over. So if you're using a glitter flake product, like we see here on the left, you do need to remove that product from its carrier. It comes on the carrier so that it can run through your vinyl cutter. So whether it's a glitter or a thermofilm or reflective, peel away the carrier, be careful so you don't tear your vinyl um, and get your piece ready to position down. Because the next step that you're gonna do is you are going to slightly um, hit this with the spray tack so it lays flat. Um, this is really your choice. I have a lot of people that don't use spray tack in the process, but sometimes you get a little puckering. So if you hit it with just a light spray tack, it'll help it hold against the garment. Uh, really nice for the next step, um, which is going to be the positioning. So uh, again, you can leave your garment hooped. You can see we're doing a cheer shell in this picture. We have our placement stitch that you can see in the background here. We're going to take that square and we're going to make sure that square is large enough to cover the entire placement stitch. Um, so make sure you have at least like half an inch on each edge to cover the entire placement stitch. If you wanted to do the letters D, H, S and three different colors of glitter, you could take a panel and lay it over each letter and have three different colors all at one time sewing out, which is a really cool uh, approach as well. So after you lay that out, scroll over to my other side of my PDF here, I'm going to sew what's called a satin stitch. And so a satin stitch, or some people call it a column stitch, I believe is a little more dense uh, of a stitch. You typically see it for your front graphics. Um, if you're buying like an NFL authentic jersey or an NBA authentic jersey, the really high end ones, they have what's called a zigzag stitch. Um, a zigzag stitch won't work for this process. The reason why is your satin stitch in your needle is actually cutting the glitter vinyl as it's sewing. So you'll see um, we recommend that you slow down your machine speed a little bit. Uh, we also recommend that you increase the density of your stitch. That way the glitter is not peeking through uh, the stitch because it is resting underneath there. So you're going to penetrate and sew your satin stitch out. And after your entire design is sewn out, you're going to be able to remove uh, the excess materials. You can see how it um, basically cut the material. You remove all of the excess material. Now keep in mind, it penetrated the outside and the inside. So be careful not to um, be really rough with the garment. Otherwise your inside pieces are gonna start falling away. Really need to get everything removed so we can move to the heat press step to be able to finish everything. So that is the final step. You're going to uh, cover it up and heat apply. And again, you notice we're using these pillows a lot. There is a pillow inside of this garment because the uh, satin stitch is pretty dense. And so you need to make sure you get those really fine edges. If you look um, 
you know, on the inside of this letter D, you need to get the inside of this. And the only way to do that effectively, because there's such a difference in height, is to use that pillow. So your satin stitch sinks down in, apply it with a medium to a firm pressure, um, and then it's going to sink down in. You're going to get good adhesion of your glitter. And you just follow the recommended application for your glitter uh, material or whatever uh, material you're using. So that process is called rip away applique. It's a great uh, secondary use for a lot of the different types of heat transfer vinyl that we have. And so I'm going to show you a couple of those. This, these are completed samples. This is thermofilm. And so what I really like about thermofilm, it's our most popular material for athletics. But when you use it for this rip away applique process, especially in uh, some of the colors like brown and black, it actually looks like a, um, a patent leather or a faux leather like material. So you can position it in that way as more of a fashion forward product um, with the thermofilm. Uh, the next product I have here uh, to show you is the 3M reflective. So you can use the reflective like this as well. Also notice how we've done, I believe it's called a variegated thread that has different colors. So you can mix and match your thread color to your vinyl color uh, and play around to get a lot of cool um, different effects. And we've linked to the PDF and the process and there's some videos that you can learn. Um, another really cool product is the patterns. So you can see we have the um, spirit design that we've customized, but our patterns and our express print product are a great way um, to do this. Of course, we've already shown you the glitter flake. This is white glitter, so it's tough to see uh, through the camera, but that's been our most popular. The flock product also works as well. So this is the flock uh, two product. And then lastly, uh, get the best of all worlds, this is a patterned glitter. So you can actually order glitter material in printed patterns with whatever um, effect you want. So I think it's a really cool technology. It's a way to use inventory you already have in a different way. If you have embroidery capability, uh, it's a great way to offer something unique uh, and different. So with that in mind, I want to show you on the website uh, where you can get into some of these uh, pattern products. And so I'm over here and let's take a look at the stalls website. So if you go to our heat transfer vinyl section, which is under CAD Cut Direct in the top left-hand corner. Um, then you can go down to Heat Transfer Vinyl and just click on Patterns is right where I'm at. It will bring you to this screen, which is a pattern generator. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can all see here. Uh, within that pattern generator, you'll be able to pick from different collections. So we actually have uh, licensed collections like Realtree as well that you can customize. So if I select the Realtree collection, It'll bring up all of the patterns. So these are actual Realtree licensed patterns that you can use in your business that we've obtained the license for. Um, and then they have something called Realtree Extra Colors. So all of these are standard. You can't change the colors on these, but on the extra colors, I can actually select those. Um, and then I'm able to go into select colors and I can select from popular uh, color combinations to get something that's gonna be cool and fashionable. So uh, patterns are really cool. I'm going to go to just our stalls, creative studio patterns. Our team does a great job with uh, bringing out new patterns. So if you think about uh, selling in to different occasions, you have a lot of those occasions here. We have everything from fabric designs to fades to floral patterns to foods. Um, so a lot of cool stuff. One of my favorite categories is awareness. Um, you can use these patterns for the rip away applique process or just as a standard heat transfer vinyl. But you just go into here, select whatever you want. If you just want to do a general, you know, let's just say awareness uh, pattern, it'll pull up on your top screen. Um, this one actually looks like it's been uh, stitched, I think, into a blanket. Um, we have the popular color combinations that you can easily select from uh, to change it. Or you can go in and completely customize your own color. So if I didn't want this to be blue, I can pull up our stalls color palette and make it, you know, this shade, uh, whatever I want to do to completely change the look of what I'm doing. So this will give you the, the concept of, of being able to customize, create your own pattern. Once you're happy with what you've created, you basically move to the select material process and you can order it either in normal heat transfer vinyl, which we call express print, in glitter, which we just talked about, or in sign vinyl with the appropriate mask. So we've seen a lot of uh, 
a lot of cool things happen um, out of the pattern uh, product lineup. So I'm going to take a quick look here um, to see what type of questions uh, we may have as I pull up uh, CAD works to start to design something to be able to cut here in a moment. All right, so if I'm scrolling back through, um, looks like there's a lot of conversation around removing the water repellent. So I think you guys are figuring that part out. Yeah, if you remove the water repellent, it can allow the uh, the rain, right? It's removed. So water is going to come through. So you got to be careful about the area that you're uh, treating, uh, treating um, and make sure you're just upfront with the customer about what you're doing to get their logo. Um, and I think we're good. Uh, well, Todd asked a question, what's the difference between silicone and brick? So silicone is uh, brick product, uh, which is another brand is actually a polyurethane based film, um, has more of a smooth surface uh, to it. Um, silicone's more of a rubbery uh, finish. It's an actual silicone base, just like silicone ink that you would screen print with. So it has a much uh, different texture uh, than the brick product. However, they both are dimensional products. Um, the silicone product is just 200 microns thick, so it's not going to stand up um, as much as, say, um, a 500, 600 micron product. So if you're looking for dimensional, um, silicone's a little bit of dimension, but it's really not the high uh, standing dimension uh, that you're looking for, like um, high definition screen printing. So those would be the differences. Um, I believe we've shared the link to the silicone vinyl. For those that are interested, you can get all of that from our um, CAD cut area on the website. And uh, good, yeah, we're happy to show you some additional rip away products to spark your imagination. Um, and then Dina says, still want a bowling pattern in the sports section. Surprise, we don't have that. So we will uh, make sure we share that feedback if it hasn't been shared already and see what we can do uh, to be able to get that going. I have the note. All right, so let's get to our projects at hand. I'm gonna go to a full screen and we're gonna be working with the CADWorks live designer again so again this is a free designer for those that haven't seen our other sessions you can uh, log in and you can uh, be able to design vector art in the cloud this is an internet uh, web-based program you uh, basically sign up for a free account and then you have access once you log in you will be able to go into the design menu and either launch the team generator which is basically for names and numbers or the design studio in this case, I'm going to launch the design studio and I'm going to be cutting on the uh, Graph Tech vinyl cutter. Let me close some of these other windows I'm not using. And basically, once you launch it, it will give you the question on what do you want to do. So for one of our projects today, um, I want to show you how you can create vector art from raster art in the program. And so I'm going to start by bringing in a element of clip art and vectorizing it. So uh, basically, actually, let, let me just import the file first. So I brought it in a little bit earlier. I pulled this file, uh, which is just a image, right, um, that I have. And so a lot of people will pull images offline. I would just suggest that you be careful about uh, copyright infringement, those sort of things. Uh, but I just want to show you conceptually how this works. If you had a photo of an image, something you drew out, uh, perhaps in, in good contrast, like we see here, um, or some file for some reason that the customer didn't have in a vector file. But the point is, I want to show you when I go into the wireframe view uh, down in the bottom right hand corner, you don't see anything. So the cutter would not be able to cut this because it's raster art. You're not seeing the vector file. So we need to do something called vectorizing this in order to be able to cut it. And so many designers that use Corel or Illustrator um, we'll either use um, a tablet and trace this uh, manually with a, like a Wacom tablet, or they will vectorize it within uh, the program. But CADWorks, which is free, also has a vectorization tool. So once I have it open, I'm just going to go to File. I'm going to go Import and Vectorize. I'll browse to find that file. I did grab it earlier. So I'm going to select that file, and you can see I've vectorized different things here in the past. Um, I'll grab that file, click on Next. And then CADWorks will walk me through the instructions. So first it says, click on the background uh, color of your image. Typically this is white and it is white. So I'm going to select that. You can only select one background color. So you want to have a nice contrast image of your design against the background if possible. Once I select the white, I'm going to click next. 
And now let's say pick up the nine foreground colors. So if you do have a multicolor uh, design that you've brought in, you can pick as many colors as you want. If it's a couple different shades of black because or gray because it's a photo, I wouldn't suggest overwhelming the system and picking all the shades of gray. Just pick something in the middle to the darker side. But in this case, I'm just going to pick my black color. After that, I'm going to click next. And CAD works is going to vectorize that for me. And it's going to give me a display of the result against a transparent background. Um, if you're not happy with the result of the trace, you can change your region resolution or your fit to curve over here. Um, I won't pretend to know the technical details of how to walk you through that, but usually if I don't like the result, I'll just this just adjust these numbers up or down, click apply and do a retrace and see if the result improves. It's pretty quick, so you can uh, toggle with that and try to get the best result. So once you're once the result's acceptable to you, you just click OK, and it automatically drops it onto your screen. So now whenever I go to that wireframe view, I can see I have nice cut lines. So the cutter can see it. I'm able to send it to my vinyl cutter uh, in order to cut it. Now I'm going to add a little bit um, to this design. And so I'm going to add some text here. Um, CADWorks does have a text generator. And so we're just going to make a shirt that uh, says keeping it. 100. I'll, I'll type in whatever text I want. You can go in and select the font you want. Um, I do have uh, from my fonts a font that I'm going to use uh, today. You can upload uh, your own fonts. You can see this one's just for personal use for the license, but if you go to dafont, dafont.com, and I'm sure you guys can share wherever you access fonts. Um, in a way that you're able to use them. You can uh, import your own fonts into the system. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, go ahead and add a gap outline to it. That's the effect I want. So when you click add effect, you can add a bunch of different effects. Um, if I wanna bring the size of that down because I don't like the way it looks, I'm gonna go ahead and size that down just slightly. I'm going to cut this all the same color, so I'm just going to spend the time to go ahead and change that gray color to black here. Um, as you'll see, I have the contour selected, so I'm editing all elements of the outline. If I wanted to edit the elements of the text, I would just click on the T uh, for the text. So the cool thing, I love this about CADWorks, is it has what's called an effect stack, so I can just keep building and building uh, onto different effects within the effect stack uh, to, to create the result I'm after. Once you're good, you click OK. It'll drop it onto a screen. Um, the sizing of my image is up here. So right now this is about eight by three. Uh, this is huge because I traced it 18 by 19. So I'm gonna size this down a little bit more into frame here. And then I'm going to size this up to get something proportional that I'm good with. Um, at that point, I'm just gonna rotate it uh, for the design on the shirt that I want. Um, of course, if you want to overlap it, uh, you can do all of those things. Um, right within the system. I'm just going to keep it simple and, and have the keeping it 100 graphic and then size the whole thing accordingly. Right now, it's about 12 by 13. That's from this edge of the K all the way to this edge of the 100, the zero uh, on the end. Um, it's a little bit on an angle. I'm going to just size it down slightly. I do want it to be oversized on this shirt to try a technique that I've been wanting to do. So let's, the height needs to be down to 12 inches. So I'm just going to type 12 inches into the height and let it go from there. Now, I always like to click wireframe because I'm guessing I'm going to need a little bit of welding here. So yeah, it's a, it's a hot mess there. So let's zoom in. In order to weld this, I'm going to need to separate these colors because I only want to weld uh, the inside. Let me just try it without doing that. I can always undo. Let me go to shaping. Go to the wireframe view so you can see what's happening. Go to shaping and weld. Okay, it did clean it up without me having to break apart, which is nice because my gap outline wasn't overlapping. So you see, I was trying to get a nice smooth uh, section of the text. So uh, this is my design, it's ready to go. So when you designed uh, in CAD works, you can always save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this um, as my
typing at 100, version 326. Save it. And then I'll be able to export it. So you can go up to file and you can export this to a variety of file formats to bring over to your cutter or your software, whatever you're using. In this case, I've downloaded VectorCut, which is a free program that comes with CADWorks and that will bring it from the cloud when I hit send to VectorCut down to my local computer, um, down into the bottom corner here. So I can open it. It will launch the VectorCut driver and then I'm gonna bring it over into your screen so you guys can see it. it launched in my other screen. And you can see it shows the material positioned on the vinyl ready to cut. Again, uh, it separates it by color. So you can see I picked two different shades of black, but that's really handy if this was a black and a blue design, for instance, I'd be able to just grab the color I wanna cut by that layer and load my blue material, cut it all, then load my black material and cut it all. I'm gonna mirror this design and then I'm gonna bring you out here to my normal camera, take a look at your questions and then get ready, uh, get my vinyl cutter hooked up and ready to go. So it looks like you guys are helping me. Thanks Jenna and Danielle for answering questions. I'm not sure that there's any questions that I need to answer directly um, on air here. A um, little bit of questions about applying to umbrellas. Gorilla Grip is a great product for umbrellas. It's good for nylon. Um, I've actually heat applied for a project many years ago, Gorilla Grip to a product called a sport umbrella, which is just a huge umbrella for the beach and actually cut that umbrella apart and put it through wash tests uh, to simulate rain and uh, weather. And the Gorilla Grip is a product that works really good uh, if you're looking for a heat transfer vinyl for umbrellas. All right, so we're gonna back up to the vinyl cutter here. I have my silicone material um, that just comes in a 20 inch wide roll. I'm gonna work with the color blue. It's gonna be applied to a red garment. Um, I use, I like to use thermal tape um, to seal my rolls and hold them together uh, when they're not in use so they're not gone all over the place. And then I'm just gonna load it onto the back of the cutter and uh, feed it through. So if you're using a uh, small desktop cutter, uh, no problem, you can just trim this material up to the sheet size or the length that you need um, and be able to do that. I'm setting it so the pinch rollers that are on this cutter are locking down on both sides uh, of the material and actually I haven't even turned the cutter on this morning so I'll flip it on here and then once the cutter boots up I'm going to tell it to go find that leading edge of the material and so the cutter will say do you have a roll loaded do you want me to find the front edge or current position and so the front edge will retract the material back to go and find this very front edge and that's what I want to do since I'm cutting from a roll that has nothing cut on it already it's a nice clean roll so it'll retract back um, and bring the blade all the way to this front left side. So one of the benefits of the graph tech is that you can cut about 25 feet straight if you can load your material correct, has very good tracking um, and has uh, great abilities uh, with overcut features and other advanced features for cutting thicker materials or fine detail on thin and stretchy materials. So I'm gonna do a test cut this time. So I'm gonna hit the test button on the screen and I'm gonna, Go ahead and say, do a test cut. I always keep my weeder um, in the tool holder behind the cutter here. This is gonna cut and then advances is out. And basically I'm looking to pull um, this square out and leave the triangle behind on the material. And then I always grab the triangle then and take a look at my carrier um, I'm feeling behind the carrier to make sure it's not cutting too deep. And this is a good instance that it did cut and peel fine, but I'm kind of cutting a little bit deep. I'm seeing a really deep score mark in my carrier that's on the vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my downforce and, and back it off a little bit. So I was cutting, let's see, what was the last material I cut on here? I think it was uh, flock material last. Um, which I had my force all the way up to 26. As I mentioned the other day, I have a really uh, dull blade in here that I've been using for a lot of different stuff. I should get that changed out. I'm gonna drop this back to uh, 22, change it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and complete another uh, test cut. All right, this one's cut, gonna weed it and do the same test have a little bit less scoring. I feel pretty good um, about that. 
still probably could back it off a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and back it off because I don't want to wear my blade completely out. Hi, Kelly. Good to see you. How are things in Las Vegas? Going to adjust my force down. Let's take it all the way down to 19. And again, anytime you load a new roll of vinyl, you want to complete these test cuts just to make sure you're not going to send your job and then have issues with it. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and run this at the 19. That looks to be pretty good. Um, the blade uh, depth, you basically want it the thickness of the material. So if you notice that your um, cutter is cutting too deep um, on your vinyl, you can always come back and adjust, retract the blade depth. One of the biggest issues um, that I always see is that uh, customers will have their blade out way too far, which really causes um, a lot of inaccurate cuts, not just uh, cutting too deep, but um, having incomplete corners, uh, rounded corners, skips in corners, which really causes an issue. So once I complete the test cut, I'm just moving this blade over to the right of those cuts to see where it's landing down. I'm gonna tell the cutter I want it to start cutting there. I'm gonna set my origin. I like to feed out a little bit of slack in my roll. I'm gonna have to step in front of you for a second. This cutter has a break on the stand. So I'm gonna put the break on so my material doesn't roll all out onto the ground. I'm just gonna cut from the slack right now. And then I'm gonna go over to my screen here. Looks like it's positioned well. It's 11.2 by 12. I should have plenty of room for that right now. And then I'm just gonna send my cut job. So that cutter is going to work while it's working. I'm going to take a look for uh, any questions. Yeah, test cuts are a lifesaver, Patrice. That's a good point. So if you don't uh, if you don't test cut, you can end up wasting a yard of vinyl or who knows how much vinyl. Um, also, if you're sending a long run and you have a roll base cutter like this, I recommend pre-feeding the length of your job. So if you look here in vector cut, it'll tell you right up in the top, the total output size. So that would be for all of your designs on the on the screen, on the um, yard or, or length of the roll. And so usually if that says like 60 inches long, I will pre-feed the cutter for those 60 inches. I can see the number on the screen as I'm feeding it just to make sure that it's going to track straight because the worst thing is it, it goes off while you're feeding it. Also, uh, something else I learned is you want to keep the space underneath your cutter completely clear. Again, I had my cutter in my garage. There were different things stacked up underneath it at different times. And if that material is hitting something as it's feeding and has the slack, um, that can cause it to go off track as well. And then I've ruined, I don't know how many yards of glitter uh, doing that at different times. So while this is finishing cutting, uh, you'll be able to hear it in the background. I'm going to move back into uh, CAD works and create a uh, design, actually look to open a design that I have created for my metallic product. Um, in this case, I'm going to go with, let's go with um, this Mount Mariah Christian School on light fabric. So it'll ask you, do you want to add to your current design? Yes, if you don't want to lose this or no, if you want to open a new file. And then you'll just size it accordingly. This one's huge right now. I'm going to do this on a left chest. Um, so I'm going to do it. Let's go five inches wide to get a look at it first. Height's about four. So I'm going to go, uh, let's go four and a half on the width because it's going to go on that uh, vest. So I'm pushing the limits of metallic for weeding. I'm going to see if it's possible. should be really fun to do. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and send that to vector cut as well. Let me just make sure it is a vector file. It is. So I'm going to go file, send a vector cut. And again, that'll download. It's just going to open it into a new window you see here. Um, I'll be able to click on that. And it will open vector cut and launch it onto our screen here. And I'll move it over so we can see it. Again, uh, mirroring the image making all my copies here. If I were doing a dozen vests, I can just say, you know, quantity 12 and it will space them out and gang it for you. And then you can rotate and individually uh, move them. <laughs> yeah, so I love your comment. You can't hear the graph tech. 
one of the best selling points. It's so quiet. So there's actually um, a story uh, about that selling point. Um, when you are looking for a vinyl cutter, a lot of vinyl cutters will sound like, uh, I don't know, you'll hear it going ur, 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 when it's cutting. And so that sound is a dead giveaway of what we call a uh, stepper motor. Um, so there are two types of motors that are used in the manufacturing of vinyl cutters. Um, there is uh, stepper motors and there, what the Graph Tech has that I'm using here and also what the Roland has that we sell is a servo motor. So when you use the servo motor, uh, you get a lot more power uh, to the vinyl cutter, a lot better cuts. It's, it's communicating in a different way. And so when you have that loud sound, typically you'll see that on cutters that are either uh, desktop or kind of $600 or less in the market. Um, it, it's not as powerful, it's not as quality as a servo motor. So for, servo motors not only are stronger, they typically have a stronger fan. And so that means it can hold the material flat against the cutting surface when you're cutting. So your material's not puckering and bunching and you're getting really good cuts. Now I've seen inexpensive cutter manufacturers try to fix this by adding extra pinch rollers and then marketing it and saying, our cutter has four pinch rollers or five pinch rollers. You gotta be careful because if it has a stepper motor, those pinch rollers are there to fix a flaw in the cutter in that it doesn't have a powerful enough fan just to hold the material flat. If you got a good cutter brand, you don't need any more than two pinch rollers to cut your 20 inch, 24 inch wide material. That'll be just fine. All right, so thanks for that comment. So um, I have my design here. I need to swap out my materials real quick and then I'll show you how I weed this silicone, but I don't wanna waste too much time. I'm going to uh, cut my metallic while I'm weeding the silicone. So I'm just gonna put this roll to the side for a second. And where did I put my metallic roll? There it is. So again, this is the metallic product. It's like a foil product. It's super thin, so I'm definitely gonna have to um, take a look at my cutting force. I'm going to undo the brake so I can pull the material through. It's 20 inch wide as well. When I say 20 inch, all of our materials start 59 inch wide. That's how we make them. And so it's a derivative of that. So it's actually 19.68 inches if you're technical. Here's a good example of what never to do. This edge of this uh, vinyl <laughs> was cut with scissors, obviously. And so what that means is it's going to be uneven and I'm going to lose a little more material. I, I need to advance it out. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be cutting stuff on this side. When it's cutting on that side, it's going to jam it and cause a major issue. So again, I'm going to go and do a quick test cut just because I loaded a new roll of vinyl. The Graph Tech does give you the ability um, to pre-program uh, eight materials. And so basically that means you could create a program and call it metallic flock, glitter, whatever you're doing. And then you can just switch to that preset instead of having to load and do test cuts every time once you get it locked in. So again, metallic's a little bit thinner. So I'm going to have to uh, go to uh, my force and adjust it. Do one more test cut and hopefully this is good. Yep, I'm happy with that. And now I will go back to the menu, make sure I set my point of origin where I want to start cutting, which is right beside there, and then send the job. So I know it's tough to see this, but you will be able to get a close up view of the weeding. I'm just going to move over to my software and again go to send cut job, and it will start cutting that while I prepare to weed this. Grab my scissors real quick. So I have my complete cut design here. I always like to trim before I start weeding because there is a piece of scrap material that's this big that I will be able to use later to certainly cut something. Another feature I love about the Graph Tech, it allows you to cut not just in between the pinch rollers, but in front of the pinch rollers. There's an expanded cutting field setting that you can set. And so it really helps you to reduce waste. Sometimes that's the difference between getting that one extra design. I gotta be careful here. I'm gonna point my computer down so you can see a little bit of the weeding. 
but not down too much where it goes into sleep mode and shuts down our broadcast. And then I'm going to take my stalls easy weeder tool um, and complete the weeding. So I always grab from a corner that weeds into the text. Okay. So you want to weed into the cavities of your text. This silicone is really nice to weed. It is thicker. So you don't want to do a ton of fine detail, but it doesn't have a sticky backing. So literally you can weed it quickly. There's very little breaking uh, that you have in the process, um, especially on larger designs like you see here, and you just peel away. And now I have to make sure I find the right piece on this gap outline. So I'm looking to go right outside of center or right uh, a level in from the outside and make sure I keep my center there and my outside there. And then I'm just gonna peel it and kind of follow it. And that came out of that piece. And then same thing for my large design. Now you'll be careful um, if you accidentally peel up anything when you're weeding the silicone, um, you don't have that sticky backing. So it isn't gonna position back down. Um, I have some people that have used just a little dab from a glue stick to get it to hold in place. Um, and also I've heard uh, a little shot of hairspray uh, can get it to hold in place. If you're ever working with a non-sticky material like that, uh, those are some hacks to be able to uh, still get the dot of an eye or whatever to hold if you accidentally peel it up. All right, I'm going to look for questions while I'm finishing this. So the question is, my cutter sets the blade to the right, but your sets it to the left. Is that a setting? Yes, that is a setting. So forget exactly what it's called, but into your cutter settings, there's something called orientation, I believe it's called. Um, and you can adjust that orientation so you can have the cutter cut from the other side. Um, I'm just used to cutting uh, from the side that I set mine up for. So I try to, try to always complete it that way um, when I'm doing any new cutter setup because that's how I learned and get used to what you're used to, I guess. All right, I'm almost done here with this one. Again, weeding any heat transfer design, vinyl design, if you haven't done something super complicated, is usually gonna take one or two uh, minutes, um, but you can calculate that into your labor. And then you always wanna make sure that you remove any excess around the edge. And a question came through from JNA Printing on how do you know the different degree of blades? So typically, there, there's a lot of degrees of blades, probably too many, but usually there's a, what I call a low and a high. So, you know, with the cutters I used to sell when I first started, it was 37 and 60. I think the Roland's 45 and 57, something like that. Usually there's two choices. Somewhere in that, you know, 40 to 50 range is going to be your low angle blade. That's what you're going to use for the majority of your standard heat transfer vinyls. And then you're going to have a high angle blade that's more in the 57 uh, to 60 degree that you're going to use for your um, for your thicker vinyls. So if you're using uh, flock, um, you probably want to go with a higher angle blade. Although if you're just trying to do like one job and get it by, um, I typically can use the 37 degree blade, but the the answer by the book is use the higher angle blade for your extremely thick material. Certainly if you were cutting something like brick, which is, was a question mentioned earlier, you're gonna need a much higher angle blade uh, to be able to get a good result uh, on that. So hopefully that answers your question. I haven't met a material that I can't cut and that I wanna use without the low angle blade and just having the downforce set correctly, to be honest, uh, especially on the graph tech because you have that overcut function. Um, that allows you to kind of compensate for any of that. So that. That means if it cuts a 90 degree angle, it cuts it over the edge a little bit, which is really nice. All right, so this is cut, ready to weed as well. Again, this is the metallic product and we're gonna run a little bit over today. So apologize for that in advance. Um, I always like to say uh, pace is important when you're weeding. Uh, you don't want to just go nuts and try to rip it right away. If you just take your time and trail the letters around, you'll see I'm getting a lot less breaking that way. So if you're if you have an accurate cut and you just follow your letters around, you're going to have a much better result than just trying to rip it uh, and go at a high level of speed. 
So the most difficult part, of course, of weeding, in my opinion, is knowing which parts to pick out <laughs> of the design. Um, in this particular case, I would print out an image of my design um, or really take my time and complete one. And then if you're doing a lot, just keep that one uh, as a point of reference uh, flipped over so you can weed all of the, the rest. So metallic has a very light tack to it um, on the backing. So you could always position something if you have an issue. I typically like to build up these scraps on the on the weeding tool for these larger pieces when I'm weeding. And then I just clear it all at once or keep a sticky pad beside me to be able to clear that all at once if you're doing a lot. Uh, there tends to be a lot of static. I even got a piece of the silicone still sticking to me. Um, but again, build up as many pieces as you can on the weeder. And then really take your time on like the center of this A to make sure you get it. Typically, if you accidentally penetrate the material um, and poke it, it's not gonna show up in your finished uh, design anyways, as long as you don't lift it up and bend it over. All right, so that's pretty good. Only took a couple minutes for that small design. And here's the real challenge of the day, and that is heat application. Everybody has time, thanks for that. <laughs> Okay, so we'll get as best of view as we can of the heat press. I have my completed uh, design there that's ready to apply. Again, always cut in a mirror, weed it, flip it over for heat application, and then we're going to apply. So I'm gonna start with the larger design. Now again, the concept that I wanted to do on this hoodie was do a little bit of an oversized print with some of these seams and whatnot. And so the uh, pillow, is gonna be a really big help to me. So I'm gonna just start by having the pillow laying on top of the press. And then I am going to split the garment uh, to be able to load it on. Again, you can use the pillow for almost any heat transfer vinyl application that I found because it's a, uh, they're typically low to medium pressure. Uh, the pillow is just fine for low to medium pressure applications, but I wouldn't recommend using the pillow for screen printed transfers for heavy application. So once you load the pillow, you're gonna adjust your pressure. I still wanna see it show up as a five on my screen there. Um, don't freak out if you see the color of a red shirt changing when you heat apply it. That's pretty normal when moisture uh, leaves the shirt, when moisture returns to it after it sits out for an hour, you'll be fine. And then I'm gonna take this oversized design out of our silicone product and I'm gonna lay it onto the garment. And so the concept of this was to have it kind of run through the, the V-neck of the, of the hoodie here. Um, and so for that, usually what I like to do, rather than planning that, because every size is different, I keep the scissors near the press. And what I, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position my design exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna take the scissors and I'm actually going to trim and I'm just cutting it to the edge because I want it to apply all the way to the edge. I'm making sure that I'm not gonna cut my shirt. So you gotta be careful, this takes a little bit of skill, but I'll just cut it. Now I've created a design, I'll pick it up and show you, that has the lettering cut out so it looks like it's flowing uh, into the shirt. So just takes a couple extra seconds to create something really cool, uh, position it back into place and now I'm going to heat apply it. Silicone applies at 300 degrees, 10 to 15 seconds, medium pressure, peel cold. For those that were with me yesterday, I have the dyes from that last garment I did on the cover sheet. So always keep yourself a pack of cover sheets. I'll take the gamble that it won't transfer to my shirt. And then make sure I'm set up for the 10 to 15 seconds here. So I'm put it on 12 seconds. And then we're gonna lock it down and heat apply. All right, yeah, so I have my heat press set up on the uh, freestanding caddy that has uh, wheels. So uh, nice thing is, is it allows me to uh, split my garment and load it on, which makes life a lot easier. Uh, in fairness, I did bring home the counter caddy to try to load so I wouldn't have to wheel the caddy through all my doorways in my house. Uh, counter caddy actually ended up being uh, not the right setup for fitting a table and being able to see everything. 
but the counter caddy is nice if you have space. Um, so I'm going to remove this, grab the pillow. The pillow is hot, so you got to be careful there. And again, this is a, um, a cold peel. So I can see already when I removed it, I started peeling it and it's starting to lift up from the edges. That means that I didn't get enough pressure. And so, as I said, we're trying stuff here together. So I'm just gonna load that back on very carefully so the material's not moving. No problem to heat and reheat. I'm just gonna cover it again. I'm going to increase my pressure to get a firmer pressure and then lock it down. So didn't get enough pressure last time, no problem. We're gonna run uh, another application with it. Um, and then I'm actually gonna let it sit on the heat press before I start moving it. This time I believe I moved it while it was um, still hot, which caused the material to start to lift up in some of those areas. So while I'm waiting on that, yeah, that's how I do it, Rosemary. It's just that scissors, great tip, right? So yeah, being able to like take it into the pocket of the hood, into the neck, or even into the seam structure, if it has kind of like a cool seam structure to it, that's a great way um, to get a cool look. Uh, silicone does tend to work better um, on 100% polyester and active wear. Um, it's, it's kind of designed for that look and feel, but I wanted to try it today uh, on this particular application. So this time, here's a tip, I'll remove it with the pillow which will give me some stability uh, to it. So I'm not bending it all up and lay it to the side. And as I'm doing that, I'm gonna swap out this platen to get ready to heat apply my metallic on the uh, sw zip up sweater vest we have here from SNS Activewear. Again, not sure if it's gonna work, but that's why we're here to try new stuff. So I'm gonna load my six by 10 platen, which is my favorite platen for small logos, left chest. Gonna split and load my garment upside down. I may need a pillow with this as well. Once I load it, we'll take a look and see. Looks like there's a little bit of fabric under here. So I'm gonna um, pull that out uh, from its sewing structure to make sure I can get this flat. Actually, I'm not gonna need a pillow. It fits on there quite nice. All of my seams and my zipper are hanging off the edge. So I'm just going to lock this down to get a good feel for the pressure. Anytime you change platens, I took out the pillow, I'm really gonna have to increase my pressure here. And when I'm operating on a six by 10 platen, you want to have less pressure um, than if you're operating on a 16 by 20 uh, on your pressure adjustment knob. So I'm preheating because that six by 10 came on and it wasn't warmed up. So I'm gonna preheat just a little bit longer. I'm gonna take my design position it into place, some really thin lines here. So I'm anxious for how this is gonna turn out. Um, find my cover sheet, which I put underneath here. And heat apply it. And metallic is 285, um, eight to 10 seconds. I'm gonna run it a little hot at 300. So we don't have to wait for the press to cool down. Um, this is still cooling over here on the silicone result. So we should be able to peel them at about the same time. Now, I don't have the luxury of moving this with the pillow, so I'm just gonna kind of get it so it doesn't get caught up. Removing it, and you can kind of see the finished result. Um, I'm looking here, it's, there's no markings on the sweater, so I feel good about that. You can see a little bit, you know, kind of where it just is ironed from the, the heat press. You can always like tack that or iron it out, but no discoloration at all. So let's let that cool down, and then I'll peel it away. I'm going to hold this one to the wall to pull out the heat a little bit quicker. <laughs> Patty says I need my air fusion. Yeah, I need my dual air fusion. More than anything, I need Joe. I miss Joe. Uh, he can get all these nice camera angles for you guys. So um, I'm trying to learn from home, trying to figure out the cameras. We're going to try some new things over the weekend to see if I can bring you some better angles on the heat press or an external camera. So we have ideas. We just got to get a little bit of time here to execute them. So that is cooled down. Let's uh, take a look here at the peel. Hoping this works well. Yeah, it's not bad. So it's wanting to, to grab a little bit, so it makes me a little bit nervous, but it's releasing fine, nothing's lifting up. And then for good measure, I probably, if I were delivering this to a client, 
I'd probably press that again just because of the cold peel on this open wee fabric. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, it'll dull the foil out a little bit, but it'll blend in a little bit nicer. But um, it feels great on there. I can kind of feel the edges just slightly. So I think it would definitely benefit from another application when I can feel that. Um, certainly wouldn't hurt anything. Um, and then, you know, has good stretch and recovery. This isn't a high stretch garment. So I think this is a good combination, honestly. So the metallic product does work on sweaters. Probably wouldn't recommend a black sweater because you may scorch that. It's going to show more of a scorch. This one's actually still retaining a lot of heat, but I'm going to give it a shot anyways. Um, it's retaining the heat because I still have the pillow inside and it's a fleece, which retains heat a little bit more. I'm trying to keep it flat while I'm peeling. It's just why I'm not peeling uh, on air, but I'm just removing the, the carrier from it. Um, at the edges, it's wanting to grip a little bit, which could mean that I've cut too deep. If you start to see a vinyl that's a cold peel vinyl grip at the edges, um, could mean I should have went down on my cutting. You can actually see I don't know if you can see it, but you can. I can certainly feel the cut lines here and see that that's cut a little deep. So if you're seeing that and you're having your material tough to release at the edge where you're having to babysit it, probably want to um, go go lower on the downforce. But you know the the finished result looks pretty good. So you can see the keeping it 100. We got it really close up into uh, the seam structure of the garment, um, and a lot of uh, a, a really nice uh, finished result. So hopefully. You guys are enjoying this. I see the comment enjoying the start to finish stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it allows us to learn together. Um, and honestly, this is where I started uh, making videos back in I think 2006 or 2008. So I'm pretty familiar with the format on going from start to finish. And it helps me to uh, even learn the product a little better from a real life uh, scenario. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying our making it uh, together live educational sessions. Again, uh, gonna ask, for you, this is your last chance before tomorrow when we give away some stuff to fill out our survey. So we have a four question survey. If you filled it out once, you're already entered. Um, but if you haven't filled that out, uh, we're gonna draw for some giveaways. And question number four, I say is the most important. That's where you tell me what you would like to see uh, in future episodes. In this episode, we are able to cover everything from creating artwork and CAD works, with the rip away applique process for using vinyl with your embroidery machine, special effect vinyls, including it looking at some actual jobs for the high vis color reflect, and then decorating two projects from start to finish, learning th some things along the way with our silicone uh, based material, as well as our metallic, which is a foil uh, like result. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I would say that we have some show specials. So if you're not a member of our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group, um, go ahead and join that. And I will share a PDF of all of the specials that we're running since all the trade shows were delayed. Um, some of them canceled, most of them postponed. We've decided to offer these specials. So if you are looking for a heat press, um, a vinyl cutter, whether that's a GraphTech or a Roland, we have some great, great deals running right now. So we'll make sure we share those over at Heat Press for Profit. And then I will see you all tomorrow at 11 a.m. for our next broadcast. Thanks for watching.